So it's a bit of a wet day today on the small old inn. It's been drizzling and raining all day. I've been out this morning, done a few pest control jobs, popped home for lunch and then out to the sawmills, picked up the post to start my poultry enclosure. So I'm just making an electric fence system that I can put my new poultry cages within. I've got three cages. I'm making it big enough so that I can move each cage one, one space to the right or left, wherever they happen to be, and three back. So each cage can move six times within the enclosure, three cages, all moving six times before they're back on the same bit of ground that they started on. So I can move them, you know, every month or, or whatever year round. So I've roughly marked out here an area. I've allowed an extra couple of meters on the depth and three meters on the width. So I'm going 21 meters long, 15 meters deep. And I've put, I've, I've just roughly paced out at the moment. Um, I've got my 50 meter tape, which is always important to have on when you're doing sort of bigger scale fencing. You can use it to space your posts correctly. You can use it if you put it tight as a line as well. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time now and get it as square as I can. This is a small holding. It's not an engineering project. As long as I'm within a few inches, I'm not too worried. Um, I just don't want to be over 21 meters. I don't want to be like a meter or something out because that will mean that the fence will just be going off at an angle. And when I'm trying to move the cages, I'll have to start putting them on an angle. You know, it just makes it all a bit awkward. So as long as it's roughly there within four to six inches or something, I'm happy with that. So it's just going to be a square block here on this rough bit of grass. Um, I probably will trim that down a bit so that it's not quite so long and I can, and I can uh, get everything, the cages bedded in, uh, bedded in well. But yeah, so I'm just going to spend this afternoon banging these posts in. I've got two eight foot posts, which will do the gateway. Eight foot, I'll put a bar on top with a big screw in to hold them as square as possible. For the gate, I've got as I've said before, I like to reuse as much stuff as I can. So off an old job, many years ago, I took a big deck up and the side railings. So it's a bit of side railing. I'm just going to use that as a gate the other way up. So the railings are going that way. Uh, a bit of decking board top and bottom. I bought myself a new galvanized uh, gate bolt lock and two nice big long galvanized hinges. So it'd be a nice sturdy gate. And then from either side of the gate, the fence will go off. That'll be this corner here, the gate. Then I'm going to send the fence off that way. Posts in each corner, slightly shorter post, five foot six, normal sort of stock fencing posts. And then one more five foot six between each one, just for extra strength. And if I need to, I've got lots of these little green plastic um, fencing posts, just the heel in type. I can put one of those between every wooden post if I need to. But I like to use, because it's going to be a permanent fence, I like to use as much of the wooden posts as possible because they just give it the strength and, and rigid, you can really sort of tighten up the wire on those and it, and it shouldn't move. So, um, yeah, a bit of a wet day, but we can't let the rain get in the way of doing any work, can we? So just going to spend the next couple of hours getting this square and finished up. The wire for the fence itself hasn't arrived yet, um, so I'll do that another time. But I, I've got the the screw-in isolators from an old fence that I used to have. I, when I used to sell eggs, I used to have about 70 chickens. I had an electric fence going all the way around the small hold in seven strands. Um, I did lose chickens because they weren't enclosed. I lost them to buzzards, stoats, things like that. And occasionally the fence shorted out in a storm to bushes and shrubs. And it was just, yeah, it just wasn't great. So this time I'm doing it away from any of the bigger trees. And um, it's going to be a nice, solid little fence. It should be able to keep its tension, like I say, with the wooden posts. And the fact it's not too big, I should be able to keep the tension nice. And uh, then my cape, my completely enclosed cages then within that. So the fence will keep the foxes out. The cages with the smaller gauge wire that I bought to do a skirt around the bottom should keep the stoats and weasels out. And uh, as I say, three cages within the unit all being able to move six times before they even go over the, the same ground and um, so yeah hopefully this will work
So after doing my uh, Benny Hill impression, uh, I've got four posts in. I've just used the little plastic um, electric fence stamping posts to mark out the corners. It's within about six centimeters now. You make a little adjustment, you have to check all the measurements again. And the way to get it to get it square is to measure corner to corner. So that cross should be the same um or as near as possible so every time i made a little adjustment adjustment you just have to kind of go back and check 15 21 15 21 check the corners then just check the 50 make a little adjustment check the corners check the crosses it's a little bit of flapping about but uh get your steps in for the day but uh yeah so i've got a corner post marked now that that is the square so i'll, I'll get the corner post in and then it's quite simple just to then put the other gate post in, be just to the side, and just put a put the tape back out as a line to get the um the middle post. What I will have to do because the corner posts, the insulators will be coming off the middle of the post. So the posts in the middle will have to just be set back a couple of inches because obviously the insulators will be screwed in to the side of that post and the middle of this post. So I've just got to set them back a couple of excuse me, a couple of inches just so that they don't out a line too much but again like i say it's um it's not an engineering project um we're not working to point whatever of a millimeter here um but just so it looks looks nice and straight that's how it's got to work so up at the top end of the small holding here where it goes uphill a little bit um there used to be a, a landfill i think it's back in the 50s or 60s uh behind my land it's not actually under my land, but I think what they did was that they made the land up to to meet where the, the landfill was. Yeah, I think it used to be lime pits many, many years ago during the war. And then it was a, a landfill after that. Um, so this top part of the field is actually very shaly where they've used sort of a limestone shingle just, just to make up the ground. I've got about, I've got about up to about a foot of topsoil a bit less up here sometimes and then it goes down into the stone the, the trees still do, do okay up here but it can get quite dry in the summer but it does make putting posts in a bit of a pain in the backside so it's important to have a bar especially for stony ground you might get away without it if you've got very soft ground but here once i get down to about there i can already feel yeah, so I'm hitting stone already. That is, yeah, about a foot, about a foot down. So I've got five foot six posts, and I'm putting them into probably three foot six, something like that. So I just need to bash a bit of a hole so the post can make its way through. And just try and get the stones out of the way a bit. Once the posts are in, in this stone, they hold really well. They just don't move, but getting them in can be a real nightmare sometimes. I always put the slightly thicker posts. I always try and pick the thicker ones when I go to the sawmill, but put the, the sturdy ones in the corners. And then I'll, so I'll get that started. I'm not going to use a spirit level to make sure it's perfectly upright. It's fine to just do it by eye. Give it a couple of bangs and then just check it's not too far out. Looks fine. And then what I do, I have a stick, three foot, three foot six, four foot. You know, with a stone here, I think I may just go to four foot. I don't think I'll get it to three foot six. It doesn't matter to have a bit more at the top. It gives me um, a bit of extra. If I want to put in another line. The right side. Couple more bangs. So you 
just got to allow for the fact that there's a thick plate of steel on the top of this banger. And there you go, that's four foot smack on the line. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, one of these in each corner. I always use the thickest ones. Like I say, the, the electric fence I'm going to put up, I tend to go on the same spacings as these little green sticks because I will probably use one between each post just to give it some extra support. So when I screw in the insulators, I'll mark on another stick the position of all these and I'll screw the insulators in the same spacing. So this goes to about three foot high. So three foot high is about there. So I'll have a bit extra on top, but that means I can always put an extra line in should I need it. But really with foxes, there's no need. They never used to get through it. This, this was the height I had all around uh, the outside before and they never got through it when it was working properly. It was only when it shorted out when I um, didn't keep the hedges cut particularly tight. And in a heavy rainstorm, it shorted out a few times. That's when I lost birds. So three foot, I think is fine. Like I say, an extra foot doesn't really matter. It's just too hard to get any deeper than that. And this ground is so stony. But yeah, so I'm going to crack on and get the rest of them in. Posts are in now. It's starting to get dark, so I shall be shooting off home in a minute. But uh, this is the old gate that I was talking about, a bit of railing of some decking that I took down years ago off a job. Um, I did have a bit of a nightmare with some of the posts. As you can see the posts on the left here. These are eight foot posts. I put them into probably, they're probably in 18 inches, but the trouble is with the ground, it's so stony. You know, that one I just hit a big stone, it wasn't going any further. And some of the other short ones, the same thing happened to her, about an inch, one or two might be two inches higher than the others. But um, all in all, it doesn't really matter. This, this ground is it's rock hard over a foot down. So uh, they're all in, three on each side, You've got the corners and a post in the middle for support. And I will use some of these little green electric fencing posts between the wooden posts, one or two of them, just to give it some extra support. Um, the wire for the fence is on order and I've got a solar power system, an old one that I used to use for the caravan. But I'm going to power the 110 power, amp hour battery that I've got in the caravan linked through a solar charger to the energizer. And I should never really with a 100 watt panel have to ever charge the battery. It should completely be self-contained and self-charging from the sun. So we'll finish it off in the next few days and I'll show you that so it's been a little while since I've um, done anything with the chicken area that I've been doing I've just been busy doing other things but I've managed to do a little bit the last couple of days so I've got my wire on you can see that seven strands of wire um, I decided to go with al aluminium wire. Um, I've only ever used the plastic plastic wire um, with the strands of, of uh, wire braided in with it. I thought I'd go with Ali wire because it says it's four times more conductive, um, you know, and, and it wasn't a great deal more expensive. And also because it was lightweight, it allowed me to give it a, a good pull. And um, rather than, I just thought rather than steel wire, it would help to get that sort of sag out of the wire um, and this worked quite well um, I did put so I've got wooden posts as I showed earlier on in, in the other videos um, I put these plastic posts between so two between each post on the bigger bigger stretch here and one between each post on this slightly shorter sides so gates on i just need to put, tack on some wire mesh um just to stop anything trying to get through there and then i've got this cage it's pretty much done so what i did is i put this small gauge it comes with this this gauge mesh you can see the holes are fairly big and i was just worried that a, a stoat and a weasel could could get through that so I bought this extra roll of wire and if you can see it's got tiny little holes you can only just get your finger in i mean whether a weasel could push through but i don't know but i've just got 
snip these cable ties off here snip these straggly ends off i've left enough down as a skirt all the way up around the sides all around so that i can peg it down and put some bricks on it um just to stop as best as possible anything that's sort of stoats and things from getting in so this cage is basically basically done roofed and wired all around just need to put a few more cable ties on and snip them off and i've got the second cage is in but only half done just got the wire on the bottom got to finish putting it over the top and then i've got a third cage which i may not even put it up this year my plan this year is to to move my silkies into here first and then um, get them settled and as soon as they go broody i'm going to get myself some hopefully some silver gray dorking uh, fertilized eggs to hatch off under those and then i'll into the second pen make a flock of of silver gray dorkins so at the end of this year i'd like to go into the winter with with a flock of silkers and a small flock of dorkins as well um, so I probably won't need the third cage until next year. So I'm, there's no point in putting it up and, and giving it an extra year of, um, of weather. I may as well leave it in the box. Uh, but yeah, so we're getting there. What I've got to do, I've got my energizer is up this end. Um, so I've got the energizer on. It's not ticking at full voltage at the moment because I need to string around the bottom. It's shorting out on a lot of places. There's grass touching the bottom. I need to come down and strim under the wire and um, there's a couple of ants nests where it's come up grounds come up and it's touching the wire so they need to be scraped out but um i've got my ticker box down in here and all i've done is just put a tarp over the top but it's just in a an old polystyrene container that some frozen food was delivered in um just to help insulate it in the winter i think batteries don't freeze until like minus 20 or something like that but that just give me a, a chance to put some foam or some straw in in that polystyrene box around it keep it keep it insulated through the winter and uh keep the sun off it in the summer but what i'm going to do off this corner post i'm going to put a solar panel over the top i've got a 100 watt solar panel uh, down in the caravan which is where this battery came from so i'm going to put the solar panel over the top of this just to stop the sun you know keep the battery and the um ticker box under the panel so it's out of the sun so it doesn't sort of get too much uv um degradation degradation degrading whatever you want to call it um yeah so we're, we're pretty much done uh, I'll finish off with a video when I move the chickens in here and I've got the solar panel on and it's all set and working properly um, and then that, uh, that'll all be done then I've got plenty of ground here as you can see to move all these around within here onto fresh ground so fingers crossed it uh, it works so it's all finished I've just moved the just move the bantams over i'm just going to let them hop out on their own or at least try to let them hop out on their own there goes one i'll just shut them in for now so i've put bricks and and some pegs in the corners to hold the skirt of wire down tight on the ground i've put tunnel traps one two and three one each side one at the back this bit of wire at the bottom of the door i'll just put a brick on when i finished doing whatever i'm doing with them but basically that is finished now pegged wired drinker feeder bed house all in there now what i can do in the summer or if it's really wet weather is I can tie a tarp over half the pen if needed strap it on with tie it on cable tie whatever and um, give them give them a bit of shelter so I'll just take you over and show you what I did with my solar panel I've got all my um, system set up I actually changed it I took the, the 
polystyrene box away because it wouldn't fit into what I wanted to do. Um, I just got some scrap bits of wood. So this is my 100 watt solar panel. So all I did was build a little frame. Like I say, just scrap bits of wood. So the battery is in there, 110 amp hour, um, like a caravan battery. Um, I've got a solar charger there. I've got a couple of these. I run my solar. I've got some solar in the pallet house. These are, I think it was like 20 pounds off Amazon. So basically your solar panel comes in here, positive and minus, negative. And um, this goes out for the battery. This gives you the readout from your battery and sends the charge to the battery via the controller. So it gives you a readout here. So the battery at the moment is sort of 13, 4, 5, 6, around that. It's changing because the ticker box is, is ticking. Um, you also have, you can take power off from these two points here for lighting or whatever. You've got two USB points that work off this on and off switch here. And you've got two DC, 12 volt DC little adapters. You can plug lights and things in there. So I have the option if I wanted to run some lights, like a flashing light apparently deters foxes as well. I could run all that from here. I can charge my phone from here. Um, you know, various things. Um, so I had a big bit of angle iron, that's a, a meter long. I couldn't quite get it all the way down it. It just started to kink over the ground's very stony here. It just hit a massive stone. I couldn't get it any further, but that's a good getting on three foot in the ground. Um, I tidied everything up, all the, the plugs were rusty. So I've got a, a wire brush on a drill, whizzed round and, and cleaned all the rust off. And um, it's, it's not getting a massive charge to the wire. It's doing about 4,000 volts. Um, sounds a lot, but I've, it's, it gives a good whack. Old Teddy over there accidentally touched it this morning and you'd think the world had ended. But um, yeah, so it works anyway. Um, I've, sp I've strimmed around under the wire and I've also went around with a bead of spray. So yeah, that's the box. It's all it's not fixed to the ground, but the weight of it with the battery and the, a few bricks and the timber, it's, it weighs a ton, so it's not going to move. Um, so that's that's the system basically. It's self-sustaining. That that hundred watt panel should keep that battery fully charged. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it's a good bit of kit, hopefully. But it looks like the chickens are hopping out now. So being silkies with the having um feathery feet i think what i will do is probably get a bit of tin and lay it from the top of the house like down to the side just just so they got somewhere extra to get under if the, if the weather's a bit a bit wet and miserable um but yeah it's a lot lot better than being in that little thing that they were in like i said that was just because the stoke unfortunately got into the big pen they were in before but um so it was necessary for a few months while I got this whole area sorted. But uh, we're all up and running now, so hopefully I'll get a broody hen soon. I can get some fertile eggs of the silver grey Dawkins that I want. And um, we can get this other pen over here finished with some chickens in. These pens, they're not huge. Like I say, 4.2 metres by 3. So silky-wise, I'd probably have maybe a a dozen or 15 at most like i said they can be moved regularly to fresh ground um but i don't think i'd go over 15 in here and i'd need a slightly bigger house anyway um the silver gray dawkins are a large fowl so in there i would probably do no more than about six hens and a cockerel um but again like i say being being able to move it 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 means you can get a few more in there because it's fresh ground if they're on that same plot all the time i'd have less than that probably three hens or something but um yeah like i said it can move six times two back uh three back three three long ways and one length that way so six times but yeah so it's all done i've wired put some wire on the bottom of the gate stop anything getting through there the electric fence is all up and running we're all pegged down so just gotta hope that all this expense and time was worth.
worth the effort. Hey, girls, aren't we? And boys. Yeah. But I hope you're you're all happy and safe in here now. They seem happy enough. Catch you later, guys.